All right, so yesterday we were talking about Nick Ramirez, and who's a lefty reliever in spring training for the Yankees, trying to make it out of the pen. And he's a big lefty, about 6'5", 240 pounds. But he's now developed an out pitch, okay? Anytime a pitcher adds to the <clears throat> pitching repertoire of the arsenal, it makes him more potentially more formidable and more versatile and more dangerous and more attractive to the team. So he developed a, um, a slider. And anytime you have a big lefty developing a slider, he can be very dangerous on hitters, So especially if it's an out pitch. So but now I'm hearing there's a pitcher, a starting pitcher, for the Yankees, who has also developed another another pitch, which is encouraging sign too. And anytime you have a news like this where pitchers develop another out pitch in the off season, it's a good thing. And Clark Schmidt is the guy. Okay, he's twenty six year old right handed pitcher, and he was the last first round draft pick out of for the uh, <clears throat> who was a pitcher for the Yankees. So if you can get to the point where he's projecting like, as a first round pitcher and kind of developing and performing that way, it'd be a net win for the Yankees. And again, they need a number five, right? They don't have one right now with Frankie Montez out. So, and Clark Schmidt, and you have Domingo Herman, you got a kid like Matt Crook competing for the spots. And, you know, at some point, if he's, if he's healthy again, Luis Hill will be up there. But Clark Schmidt has just developed a cutter. And he's got a pretty good arsenal pitches already. You know, he's shown to be capable of, of starting. You know, he hasn't been as successful as out, of, out, of the, uh, out of the bullpen. But again, he, uh, you know, he, he's been kind of developed as a starter. So, but now he has a cutter as part of his arsenal. And that could make him more dangerous. Okay. And again, you know, this could be, and I'm not saying it is, but it could be a reason why the Yankees didn't sign another pitcher after Carlos Rodon because they knew he was developing this and had, they were excited about the progress and whatnot. So, and they, they clearly would have known that he's not going to just come in and say, hey, guy, I developed a cutter. Like, you know, they, they clearly had Matt Blake or some other folks working with him on this stuff. So, but the fact that it's developed to the point now where it's being talked about across spring training is a good thing. <clears throat> it's a very good thing. So, I'm excited to report that now. Again, we have a lefty reliever with, an, with a potential secret weapon pitch, and now we have a righty starter who can be, you know, and it can give them the edge over these guys for the fifth starter spot as well. So who also potentially has a, a third pitch added to the repertoire and could be an out pitch too. So this is good news. I would be excited. And again, Clark Schmidt's shown the ability to get dudes out. He's, he throws pretty hard too. He throws harder than Herman, who's a little bit more crafty, but Herman has shown the ability to throw pretty hard as well. But... Um, Overall, I'm excited to hear this news. Now, that's the Yankee news I have for you this morning, okay? Um, let's pivot to Man, uh, Manny Machado because we know that he's exercising his that He announced it already. But now the numbers have already come out. He's apparently looking to get a 10-year, $400 million deal, $40 million per, starting at age 31, okay? I, and I, I, you know, I like Machado, but I've also said getting a, a, a contract that big, which is why I was worried about Aaron Judge because you're going to get a lot of years on the wrong side of 30 for a lot of money, Okay? And even though he's on a Hall of Fame trajectory, if the Yankees got him, okay, it would be exciting. But personally, I would, you know, and again, it depends on how their outfield is progressing too. I would give that money to a guy like Juan Soto instead of a Manny Machado. So, but they do have a need for a, a third baseman, and he's as good as it gets. Been the best in baseball. So, but I worry about the, you know, the downside of 30 years. So, and again, that's a lot of money. Who, I, I, will he get it? I don't know. I mean, Devers just got 300 plus. Machado is the best, so he could. I mean, that's a ballsy ask, but again, you know, the he could he could get it. He's a Boris guy, so and this is what Boris does. He'll ask for a billion. They you know, sell up 400 million. They're like that's what he does. So, but that's the numbers in terms of what Manny Machado wants. So it's going to be a big ask, but it's going to be a small amount of teams. Obviously, the Mets are going to be in there. I have a lot of folks keep telling me, oh, they're going to get oh, uh, Machado and Otani. Okay. Doesn't guarantee them a World Series, it doesn't. So, and then uh, go ahead, spend a billion dollars, go for it, go for it, boys. So, the Yankees get them, they get them. <clears throat> Personally, I, I think that money would be uh, better spent that somebody's going to be 26, entering free agency, as opposed to somebody entering 31, entering free agency. So, who's going to be 31 entering free agency? So, that age makes a difference, at least in my opinion. Even though elite players are elite players, how long he's going to be elite is be elite is the question. That's why I had the same concerns about Judge. I really did. So, but Judge is here. I hope he stays healthy and, produ- and continues to produce elite. So, just like I hope the same thing for Machado. But that's his ask. 10 years, $400 million. And lastly, Elvis Andrews, from a shortstop, or he is a shortstop, he signed the one-year deal with the White Sox. So, it gives him a veteran presence over there to help guys like Tim Anderson. Apparently, he's going to play second base with the White Sox. I think he's re-signing with them. I think, I think he might have been acquired by them last season. But, um... <clears throat> 
Apparently he's going to be playing second base to complement Tim Anderson. So it gives him a veteran who can play ball still. And uh, you know, they had a relatively light offseason. They did get Andrew Benatendi and Mike Clevenger. Mike Clevenger, he might be in some trouble, so we don't know if he's actually going to be able to play. But uh, bringing in Elvis Andrews brings him another good veteran in their, you know, in their efforts to try to uh, be competitive in the American League Central. But that's what I got for you right now. Let me know what you think about the Clark Schmidt pitch. And again, more news is coming. I'll keep you fed in on everything so you know exactly what to do if you don't want to miss it. Talk to you next time.